shortly. Please continue to stand by. Thank you for your patience. Cause right now I'm waiting on this earnings call to go through right now, bro. Um, I gotta focus on these investments. This is my first time doing this type of video on my channel, so welcome, y'all. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, we just waiting for this call. It's Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for standing by, and welcome to Tesla's Q1 2020 financial results and Q&A webcast. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. After the speaker presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star one on your telephone. Please be advised that today's conference is being recorded. If you require any further assistance, please press star zero. I would now like to hand the conference over to your speaker, Mr. Martin Vieca, Senior Director for Investor Relations. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Sherry, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Tesla's first quarter 2020 Q&A webcast. I'm joined today by Elon Musk, Zachary Kirkhorn, and a number of other executives. Our Q1 results were announced at about 1 p.m. Pacific time in the update deck we published at the same link as this webcast. During this call, we'll discuss our business outlook and make forward-looking statements. These comments are based on our predictions and expectations as of today. Actual events or results could differ materially due to a number of risks and uncertainties, including those mentioned in our most recent filings with the SEC. During the question and answer portion of today's call, please limit yourself to one question and one follow-up. Please press star one now if you would like to uh, join the question queue. Before we jump into Q&A, Elon has some opening remarks. Elon? Uh, thank you. So <clears throat> Q1 ended up being a strong quarter despite many, cha many challenges in the final few weeks. This is the first time we've achieved positive gap net, net income uh, in a seasonally weak first quarter. Even with all the challenges, we achieved a 20% automotive gross margin, excluding regulatory credits, while ramping two major products. Um, what we've learned from this is that uh, we've obviously learned a lot here. After all, um, after the Model 3 ramp from three years ago, um, our new products get ramped faster and become profitable sooner. In Q1, we produced more Model Ys in the first quarter than Model 3s in Fremont in the first two quarters. Thus far, the Model Y ramp has been even faster than the Giga Shanghai ramp in Q1. Most surprisingly, in other words, we are ahead of the schedule that we were ahead of already. Um, most surprisingly, uh, Model Y was profitable already in its first quarter of production, something we haven't achieved with any product in the past. Regarding Autopilot, we released a new software update for traffic lights and stop signs. Uh, to early access users in March and to uh, all U.S. customers uh, with, with full, the full self-driving package uh, just last week. Our cars will now automatically stop at each stop sign or traffic light until the driver gets a confirmation to proceed. Um, I, should, I should say that the car is actually capable of much more than this, uh, but we are, we are only uh, exposing functionality that we feel uh, quite good about and where we feel that it is a, a, probably a safety improvement. Um, 
we are we are collecting data from over a million intersections every month at this point. This this number will grow exponentially as more people get the update and as more people start driving the game. Uh, soon we will be collecting uh, data from over a billion intersections per month. Uh, all of those uh, drive all of those confirmations are training our neural net. Essentially, the, the 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 driver when driving and taking action is effectively labeling uh, the labeling reality as they drive. Um, and making the neural net better and better. Uh, but this is an advantage that no one else has. We're, we're quite literally orders of magnitude more than everyone else combined. Um, I think this is difficult to, to, to fully appreciate. Um, you know, it's the reason that it's, it's very difficult to have a search engine that competes with Google because everyone is training Google all the time with, it, with, uh, with their searches. So when you search on something and you click on a link, you're training Google every time you do that. It's just very difficult for any any new search engine to compete on that basis. Um, so, uh, so all those confirmations are training a neural net, uh, and soon cars will be able to drive through an intersection without a confirmation, as well as to make turns. Um, and and we really feel we're uh, I feel extremely comfortable, extremely confident that uh, it will be possible to do. Uh, a drive from your home to your office um, and most of the time with no interventions by the end of the year. Uh, so this, this, this is, we, we can almost do this already with the leading edge alpha builds uh, that, that I'm driving in the car. Um, um, so let's see, on another technology front, the fronts of we increased the range of model S and X yet again, this time to 391 miles for model S and 351 miles for model X. And it should be said that actually the model, the, the, the real model S range uh, is, is 400 miles. Um, but when we did the last EPA test, um, unfortunately EPA left the car door open and the keys in the car. So the car, and they did this overnight. And so the car actually, it, um, went into waiting for driver mode and lost 2% of its range. And as a result, it had a 391 uh, test. As soon as the EPA reopens for testing, we'll redo the test and we're actually confident that we will achieve a 400 mile or greater range with the Model S. But to be clear, the, the, the Model S that uh, for the past two months, the, the, the true range of the Model S, the past two, two months has been 400 miles. Um, and, and of course, we're not stopping there. We'll, we'll can always continue pushing for improved range over time and improving improving um, handling, acceleration, and all the little details that make uh, a Tesla special. For Model Y, we, we introduced the revolutionary two-piece uh, rear underbody casting um, that uh, we're um, going to be making a single-piece casting uh, later this year, um, meaning that essentially the rear third of the body is cast as a single piece, which is no, no casting of, of this size of complexity has ever been done before. Um, in fact, there isn't even anything that is on on par with the two piece casting for the Model Y. So we're really pushing the envelope on vehicle structural engineering and manufacturing. I'm very excited about this, this approach as it allows us to reduce the, the weight, the cost, um, and, and improve uh, uh, NBH, it's better in every way, essentially. Um, we also, for Model Y, we also introduced a revolutionary new heat pump, uh, which uh, allows the car to have a higher range. Um, so the, the Model Y has remarkable range, uh, you know, on par with, in fact, slightly better than, I guess, the Model 3. Um, and just despite being a bigger car, that uh, weighs more. And this is, uh, the heat pump is a key contributor to that. Um, uh, it is especially uh, excellent at low temperature driving. So, um, and, and the feedback we're, we're getting from customers who have received the, the Model Y thus far has been universally positive. Um, we're, we're confident this, this product will be our best selling product ever. So, uh, in conclusion, um, uh, and, and, and just to look at looking for, I guess this is a forward-looking statement. 
Um, we we are absolutely continuing uh, our model line capacity expansion at full speed at both Giga Berlin and Giga Shanghai, uh, and, and and here in Fremont when they will let us continue. Um, localized production in China and in Europe will bring the cost down, making our, our products even more competitive over time. Uh, while many other companies are cutting back on investment, we are doing the opposite. We have absolutely pedaled the metal uh, on new products and expanding the company. And, uh, and we're really looking forward to being in sometime next year a truly global manufacturer with major factories in uh, North America, China, and Europe, and a capacity of well over a million units a year. So there's a tremendous amount to look forward to, and we we can't wait to tell you what's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you. And now to Zach's opening remarks. Yeah, thanks, Martin, and thanks, Elon. Uh, I'm very proud of the accomplishments of the Tesla team this past quarter. Uh, a few things to highlight and add to what Elon just mentioned. We successfully launched, ramped, and demonstrated profitability of the Model Y, as Elon mentioned, significantly ahead of schedule. And this is our second large-scale product launch since Model 3 in 2017, and it's evidence to the progress we've made on cost control and ramp efficiency. It, it's hard to understate the significance of demonstrating profitability of this program in its first quarter of production. Our Shanghai Model 3 margins improved dramatically since Q4 of last year, nearing equivalence of Model 3's built-in free month. This is despite not yet running at full capacity while also managing through the production shutdown in early February. We also announced a long range and performance variant of the Model 3 for our roadmap, which will positively impact ASPs in China. On order rates, we did not experience much of an impact related to the expiration of government incentives at the end of Q4. In fact, we exited the quarter with our highest ever backlog yet again. Aided by these accomplishments, we were able to achieve our first ever Q1 profit. Automotive gross margin, excluding the impact of regulatory credits, remained strong for all products, despite charges taken in Q1 associated with production downtime. We continue to make progress on OPEX efficiency, as well as our service and other margins. Our energy business was impacted as well by shutdown activities in Q1, limiting deployments. We also experienced expected launch inefficiencies associated with our third version of the solar roof, which impacted overall profitability. As I've noted before, we expect regulatory credit sales, which are credits we sell to other car makers, to generally increase with time. This can be seen by the increase from Q1 relative to Q4. And note that most of the credit revenue did not contribute to cash in Q1, and it's reflected in the accounts receivable uh, on the balance sheet. Our free cash flows were impacted by the temporary uh, by the temporary increase in end of quarter inventory for all our products, resulting from the abrupt suspension of production and delivery operations. Had these op interruptions not occurred, we were pacing towards a record quarter of deliveries and strong free cash flows. As Elon mentioned, it is extremely important that we remain on track to achieve our long-term plans and technology roadmap. We are taking the near-term actions required to continue those investments. Model Y in Shanghai and Berlin are proceeding as planned, and we're making progress on improving capacity for Model Y in Fremont and Model 3 in Shanghai. In the near term, our Shanghai factory remains operational, contributing an increasing level of cash flows and profitability to the company. In Fremont, we're working towards restarting production as soon as that's possible. We are also continuing to deliver cars that we were unable to deliver at the end of the first quarter. Our vehicle inventory balance increased by 14,000 units at the end of Q1, which was a headwind to free cash flows in Q1, but it's helpful in Q2. Note that one of the most important aspects of Model Y in Fremont and Model 3 in Shanghai is the dramatically improved cash conversion cycle by locally producing and delivering vehicles. While sales and delivery operations have paused in many areas of the world, we are still receiving many online orders, despite inability for our customers to experience the product prior to ordering. However, unavoidably, the extended shutdown in Fremont will have an impact on our near-term financial performance, and we will need to work through how quickly we'll be able to ramp production to prior levels. More broadly, we remain focused on ensuring our cash flows are managed appropriately. Working capital management, in particular raw material inventory, is the single most important lever in managing our cash flows during this time. The Tesla team has done a great job here. 
We've also taken actions to eliminate or reduce non-critical expenses and optional investments while continuing to drive efficiencies throughout the business. Overall, we've modeled many scenarios into 2021 and remain comfortable that we have sufficient liquidity to proceed fully with our most important long-term investments. Uh, it's important to note that Tesla remains an extremely agile and dynamic company, and this is aided by the substantial work we've done over the last year to improve our cost efficiency and productivity. And we have the ability to quickly adjust our spending and planning as required. So thank you again for, to the Tesla team for uh, success in Q1, and we will turn to questions. Thank you very much. Uh, so we'll take the first questions from uh, institutional investors compiled by Safe Technologies. Here's the first question from institutional investor is, most Tesla owners have yet to purchase or experience FSV, and despite most vehicles having all the necessary hardware, what levers could you pull to accelerate adoption and deepen your data advantage? For example, could you consider offering FSV as a premium subscription? Um, I think we, we, we will offer uh, postal driving as a, as a subscription service, uh, but it will be um, probably towards the end of this year. Um, it, it, I should say it will still make sense as, as to, to buy FSD as an option as in our, in our view, it, buying FSD is, is an investment um, in the future and, and we're confident that it is an investment that will pay off to the consumer to the benefit of the consumer. Uh, and in, in my opinion, um, buying the FSD option is something people will not regret doing. I agree. And, and financially, rolling the upfront purchase of your of the FSD option into a loan in the vehicle or a lease is will be the least expensive way on a monthly basis to own, plus you preserve the option value of increased value with time. Yeah. But we do understand that some customers who have ownership or at least their vehicle did not purchase that option up front. And so this will enable those customers um, to spread out the cost of, of ownership of FSD or subscription of the time. Yeah, absolutely. I should measure like at a high level, our, our overall goal is to, to maximize the area under the curve of customer happiness. That that is our goal. And we think that you know that that's the kind of thing that all companies should try to do. Um, and it's 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 what, what results in long term value creation. Um, and you know, and loyalty to get loyalty. So our goal is always really to do the best thing for the customers, um, and, and and we're confident that if, that I, us, if, if we if we behave like that, that that they the customers in turn will, will behave the same way to us. Thank you. Uh, the second question from investors is. Uh, China recently announced changes to its uh, NEV subsidy program that disqualifies Tesla vehicles from benefiting uh, from the subsidies. To what extent is there room for Tesla to lower manufacturing costs in China and pass those savings to buyer so they can qualify for the subsidy? Yeah, so um, we are making rapid progress on lowering the production cost in China. And um, um, we're actually excited to announce on this call that we will be reducing the price of the standard range uh, Model 3, uh, uh, basically tomorrow China time. So the day after tomorrow, California time, but tomorrow China time. Um, and uh, and that, that will be a price below the subsidy limit. And we're, 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 we feel confident that that will still be uh, a vehicle that delivers uh, a good gross margin. Yeah, and, and on the manufacturing cost portion of the question, uh, the uh, cost of vehicles produced in Shanghai in Q1 is already lower than the cost to produce the Model 3 in Fremont, and there's still significant opportunity left to take cost out. So fixed cost absorption from higher production volumes, which are occurring in Q2 and will occur through the rest of the year, we're not fully localized on the supply chain yet. And so while a lot of the supply chain is localized, it's not complete, and there's additional opportunities there. Um, and so we'll continue to bring the price down and expand margin, cost down and expand margin, even with this reduction in price that Elon mentioned on the standard range version of the vehicle. Thank you. The next question is, Andy Grow once said that great companies are improved by crises. Uh, in which way has Tesla improved or, ex or is expected to improve coming out of COVID-19? Well, it, 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 you know, we're, we, it has caused us to look closely at our cost structure and um, to be more efficient as a company. Uh, that, that's um, 
you know, one always has to do that in a crisis. Um, and, uh, you know, to think about our core beliefs and, and, and what do we want to do. And we, you know, came to the conclusion that, uh, that, that the right, the right move is actually to continue to expand rapidly, continue to invest, uh, in, in the future in new technologies, um, even though it is risky. Um, and we've talked to some of key uh, investors and they support that approach as well. So, um, you know, I think that there's, there's clearly an uncertain, you know, future ahead. It's a bit of a bumpy road, but I think the, the long term uh, prospects are extremely good. Okay. Anything you guys want to add? Yeah, I agree with that, Elon. What? Um, the um, prioritization on the key projects will enable us to execute more efficiently and faster on them, which I think is great. But the other one that I would add is it's always been our vision at Tesla to um, improve the customer experience and, and make that as digital as possible. Yeah, touchless and delivery. So touchless delivery, mobile service, uh, touchless sales has been something that we've been very focused on and made a lot of progress on. Yeah, but, it, but Tesla's the only car that you can you can literally order it in, in, in less than five minutes on your phone. You can order a car and have it delivered to your doorstep with, um, with all the paperwork and everything done. That's it, effortless. And many customers do that. And, and they're doing it, yes. In fact, a big part of it is just um, trying to communicate to people that this is something you can do because normally buying a car isn't quite a pain. It, it, for most people, they would rather go to the dentist than buy a new car. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Um, actually, my, my dentist is great, but, but, but it's, it's really like quite an arduous thing. You know, you know, um, and, and, you know when the typical retail experience of buying a new car is um, more, more painful to people than, than having a root canal, then uh, you have to say, well, um, and for Tesla, it is uh, completely as, as easy as ordering something on the Apple App Store or ordering something on Amazon and, and just up to the car. Yeah. I mean, I mean five minutes, if, if you really went fast, I think you could order a car probably in 90 seconds. Um, so. Thank you. Uh, the next question from institutional investor is, uh, can you give us a brief preview of the battery day by generally high, highlighting steps that is like taking to improve cell uh, energy density and timeline for introduction? Um, yeah, actually, we're just, I, I, we don't want to preempt battery day. Um, we want to leave the exciting news for, for that day. But there will be a, a lot of exciting news to, to tell. Um, and I think it, it would be one of the most exciting days in, in Tesla's history. Um, and we're just trying to figure out the right timing for that. Uh, we think probably the right timing will be the, um, probably the third week of May. Um, um, not, not giving a firm date, but we think that probably that's the right timing. Um, and uh, depending upon what we're allowed to do, it'll either be in California or Texas. Okay. And the last question from institutional investors. Uh, could you please up, uh, update on progress towards development and commercialization of full self-driving? How much revenue have you recognized so far? Um, so, just a couple of things on the financials for full self-driving. Um, and so, currently in North America, it's sold for seven thousand dollars as an option. We take roughly half of that as revenue, and the other half of it goes into deferred revenue. Um, that's associated with features that will be released with time. Our deferred revenue balance is um, continuing to grow, a little bit over six hundred million dollars. And so as we release features with time, at the end of every quarter, we take a look at what features have been released, associated value, and then we can release that from the deferred revenue into our financials for that quarter. And then cars going forward, once a feature is released, we can recognize that revenue. So we reduce the amount of deferral and we can recognize that revenue within period. So I mean, this is uh, one of what we think will be one of the most powerful gross margin levers with time as the feature suite is rolled out. Absolutely, but there's also a, a tremendous amount of untapped potential in um, the, the, the fleet out there that could upgrade to turn on um, autopilot, basic autopilot, or full self driving, um, and that's something we will enable you know, just as a simple in-app purchase. 
um, or as we talked about earlier, just you know, towards the end of the year as a subscription. So that, that's that's just a, a lot of untapped potential there. Um, that, that's not in the deferred revenue line, obviously, um, but is certainly a great deal of deferred potential that we think is a large portion of which is likely, likely to reach fruition. Thank you. And now let's go to questions from retail investors. Uh, question number one, uh, Elon has mentioned a 50% compound annual growth target for Tesla in the past. Is this still in line with Tesla's ambitions for the next five to 10 years? This would be 4 million vehicles in 2025 and more than 20 million vehicles in 2030. Is 40% a more realistic target? Well, it, it's always difficult to predict uh, what the macro situation is going to be. Um, I think you know, very, very few people would have predicted, you know, the, the you know, the, the unexpected, sort of, you know, roundhouse that that COVID um, came up with, that sort of came out of nowhere. Um, so, um, I think in, in the absence of something, some some massive force majeure event, but quite massive, um, I think fifty percent is is the the likely number. Um, it, it's possible that it's forty percent. I, I I would be very shocked if it's less than forty percent, uh, even with a force majeure short of World War Three. Okay. Uh, the next question from retail investors: uh, When will you announce the next giga? How many gigas do you have planned for the next five years? <laughs> um, I think we will announce the next gig up possibly as soon as um, a month. But we may, we may announce this as soon as next month. Um, there's a lot of predictions just saying yeah, that's, that could happen. Um, it will certainly be within three months and, and possibly one month. Um, and that would be in, in the US. Um, so as for how many will be in five years, I'm not, I, I don't know right now what that number would be. Um, I, I guess several more than there are today, but I'm not sure what, what exactly would be in, in five years, but some number more than today. I'll also add that our gigas have gotten bigger. Yeah. And uh, so we arguably we start being called Terra. Yeah, uh, with multiple products as well. And so, you know, the absolute number of gigafactories we may ultimately build might be less, but each one is larger. Uh, and that's under a belief that just significant efficiencies by having as much as possible and similar product lines under the same roof um, and as much vertical integration as possible all in one facility. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, can you give us an update on solar roof ramp? How many are you currently able to install per week? Uh, what is your installations per week's target for the end of 2021? Um, well, we were actually um, gaining trans momentum with the solar roof uh, before COVID. Um, that, and COVID essentially shut us down, uh, both from the ability to install and the ability to get permits. The permit offices were closed. And we were, we, you know, shelter in place all over the place. So, you obviously, cannot install in the, if you can't get permits and you can't physically do it. It's physically impossible. So, um, but I think the long-term trend for solar roof is extremely good, um, and I'm confident that let's say within the next, uh, you know, I don't know, year or maybe even by end of year. We should be installing um, at uh, a rate of a thousand a week. Um, uh, that's not in the in the middle of, of winter or something. It's just like it's, it's taking seasonality, uh, allowing for, for seasonality. We it's hard to install on roofs that are covered in snow and ice. Uh, but like in a say spring, um, I think it's in, installing, which, which is the hard part. We, we we actually have demonstrated the ability to, to hit a thousand a week. Um, uh, first build rate for the solar glass roof uh, already, so that's not uh, that's not a problem. Uh, it's it's building up the install team, 
uh, building up the third party channel uh, installers, the, roof, the roofing industry installers. Um, and, uh, and and internally, we want to have at least a thousand, a thousand solar roof and install teams uh, with um, and taking a week or perhaps a little less than a week to do an install, which gets you a thousand a week uh, roof installations. We see demand is demand is good, production is good. Uh, so it's really all about the install. Um, and then and then like I said, also building up the uh, training the the, the very um, a diverse uh, group of of of, in, in, of companies in the roofing industry to also install solar roof. That I think will scale, allows to scale, you know, far beyond a thousand a week. Um, we're also seeing a lot of interest outside of North America. Um, so to expect this to be a product that is international, um, and and actually seeing a tremendous amount of interest from China um, on the solar roof. So. Um, we're confident this, this will be a very significant part of the company over time. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, uh, can you elaborate on Tesla's plan to enter the residential and or commercial HVAC market? Can you provide some basics of how uh, your system will work? Will you consider the heat pump water heater market as well? Um, <clears throat> well, as I said on Twitter, I'm personally extremely excited to build a kick-ass HVAC system that also has, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, hospital grade um, particle filtration. Basically, have a filtration that filters out uh, um, viruses, bacteria, um, pollen, uh, fungi, um, and uh, but also neutralizes uh, acidic al alkaline gases. Um, that is that is quiet. Um, and efficient, uh, and uh, these are all things we've achieved in, in, in our cars. And in fact, I don't know if a lot of people realize, but the Model S and X are the only cars in the world that have a hospital operating room grade, like uh, HEPA filters built in. So they're very big. So um, if you can get to a, a particle count that is insanely low uh, with, uh, with our cars. And um, 3 and Y have like MERV 16 or 15 capable filtration. Yeah. Also, which is I don't like model three and Y are, are they're no slash they're no slashes. Model three and Y are also way they're way better than any other car to best of my knowledge. Uh, they're not quite as good as possible operating room, but they're extremely good. Way, way better than any other normal car. Um, and we're continuing to improve the, the cultures on three and Y. Um, I guess this, these actually have a big effect on health, even in normal just day to day living. It's, it's reducing um, particle counts. Um, and and uh, you know it has effect on allergies and all sorts of things. So it's it's really um, air quality is incredibly important. It, 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 you know, even in a non-COVID situation, it's extremely important. So anyway, t taking all those things that we've learned and applying to home HVAC and would be an commercial HVAC would be just very exciting. Um, and um, and then if you've, if you've got if you're condensing water, like what wine also have it be a water source. Um, if you have water, you possibly could then heat the water and, and have the water heater as well. Yeah, use it as a heat source if you need it instead of the outdoors when the outdoors is really cold. Yeah. Or the other way around. So that's option. It could be a hell of a product. Um so we, we just have to you know wait tell tell that we have a chance to divide a formula we can chew on the car front. So we, we gotta make sure we 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 had a lot of um irons in the fire here for for new products with the Cyber trucks, semi, road, uh, new roads, or um, you know, and, and the, the, get, the giga factories in various parts of the world, uh, and, and spooling up Model Y, and autopilot, and you know, solar roof, and new technology. Uh, yeah, exactly. Power wall, power, power pack, mega pack. Um, but we are seeing tremendous demand for stationary storage, uh, more than more than we can supply, at least at least for 2020. Thank you. And the last question from the retail is, um, when will Tesla start acquiring uh, utilities like the Hornsdale Power Reserve and Moss Landing instead of selling them battery storage? Does it make sense for Tesla to buy Pico plants and convert them? Well, we haven't really thought about that yet. Um, it's, not, it's not out of the question, but uh, our brain is full. Um, <laughs> excuse me, sir. Our brain is full. <laughs> 
Um, it's, it's not out of the question. Um, you know, our, our, our overarching goal is to help accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. And, um, you know, with, and the, the three elements of that are sustainable power generation, meaning you've got to store the power, uh, station storage, and then you've got to have uh, electric transportation. Um, so, and, um, we don't have like, say, specific market share goals or anything like that. It's just to the degree that we can accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. We think that's a fundamental good for the world and we want to do that as fast as possible. But it's not like I said, market share growth, you know, it's going in and of itself. It's just, you know, fast this happens, the better the world is, the better off the world is. Thank you very much. And uh, I think now we can move to analyst questions. Thank you. Our first question will come from Adam Jonas with Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Um, thanks, everybody. I hope everyone's uh, safe and, and healthy. Um, I got one question, one follow up. And, and I point out, I, I've had a root canal before, and I would agree, Elon, it was less painful than buying a car. <laughs> exactly. um, I mean, it, it really, it's, 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big problem, actually. It's a big it's problem. Crazy. Yes. Different conversations. Um, uh, Zach and Healthy, um, I got one question, one follow up. And, and I point out, I, I've had a root canal before, and I would agree, Elon, it was less painful than buying a car. <laughs> exactly. um, I mean, it, it really, it's, 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a big problem, actually. It's a big it's problem. Crazy. Yes. Different conversations. Um, uh, Zach, first for you, any real-time update on company liquidity at the end of April? Some some companies have, you know, given the circumstances, gone out of their way to give a little color on that. Just want to give you a shot at that. And I got a follow-up. Yeah, it's a fair question. Um, I don't have any additional color to provide. So $8.1 billion in cash and cash equivalents at the end of Q1. We're managing it very closely um, at the end of Q1. We're managing it very closely. Um, uh, uh, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, we do have uh, an increase in inventory of vehicles, increase in inventory of vehicles um, that we were unable to deliver at the end of Q1. So we're making progress delivering those through April, which is helpful for liquidity. And you know, as we've been looking at liquidity, we've been looking at this over the next 18 months, and there's ups and downs to the to the liquidity. Um, you know, currently now. As we're not producing, we still have payables from Q1 that we're paying off, but then in a couple of months, we'll quickly be through that, and then we'll have a gap in payables since we don't have any parts coming in. So it does go up and down a little bit. But you know, in looking at the long-term horizon, which is how we're managing it right now, we feel pretty comfortable with the liquidity position of the company. Yeah, yeah. I, I should say we, we are a bit worried about not being able to resume production um, in the Bay Area, and, and that should be identified as a serious risk. Um, that, you know, that we, we, we only have two car factories right now, one in Shanghai and one in mm -hmm. the Bay Area, and the Bay Area produces the vast majority of our cars, uh, all of S&X, um, uh, uh, and, and most of the three, and all of the Y. So um, the, the extension of the shelter place, uh, or frankly, I would call it forcibly imprisoning people in their homes, uh, against all their constitutional rights, that, that my opinion, and breaking people's freedoms in ways that are horrible and, and, and wrong, uh, and that why people came to America or built this country. What the fuck do you think? Um, people, I, the outrage is an outrage. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, but it, it will cause great harm, not just to Tesla, but to many companies. Um, and, while Tesla will weather the storm, there are many small companies that will not. And, and, and all the people's, everything people have worked for their whole life it gets, it gets, is being destroyed in real time. Um, and we're going to have many suppliers and are, are having many suppliers that are having super hard times, especially the small ones. Um, and it, it's, it's causing a lot of strife to a lot of people. Um, yeah. well, well, Elon, on that point, you, know, you mentioned people that gave their lives to build the country. Um, my, my thoughts for you on this. There have been a lot of comparisons, you know, drawn to the you know, state of the U.S. economy to the early 1930s when Roosevelt began a series of new deals and infrastructure projects. 
or post World War II when Eisenhower launched the U.S. Highway Act and when JFK launched the Apollo program, which you could say was you know influenced by the Cold War clearly, and, and you've benefited from and our space program benefited from. What would be your message to U.S. lawmakers on this call as we, in addition to your your opinions on shelter in place, but you know thinking longer term, your message to U.S. lawmakers coming out of the crisis, specifically around EV infrastructure and a, ch a chance to kind of you know, work with taxpayers to support sustainable transport and renewable energy. I'm wondering if you see this, you know, as a chance to make make the crisis and, and all the loss and lives lost not be in vain. Thanks. I think it's high time we invested in infrastructure in this country. We have a lot of you know, crumbling highways and bridges and, um, and, and frankly, um, you know, when I visit China, I, I, I see their infrastructure as being much better than ours. It's, it's great. Um, um, Europe has better infrastructure. It's, it's, it's really quite sad that the U.S. infrastructure, um, especially sort of roads and highways, is, is, is where it is today. And our, our airports, um, in a lot of cases, are, are, are an embarrassment. Um, so, and it's not just a question of money, it's a question of will. Um, you know, sometimes we spend a lot of money on these things, but what are we getting for it? For it? Um, so, and, and, and yeah, we, we really need to be thinking about what is the transportation of the future and what the transportation of the past. Um, you know, if this was uh, 1920, do you want to be investing in steam engines or internal combustion engines? But, you know, obviously, not, not steam engines. So, um, you know, those are the times to think about the future. Um, and, and also to, to ask, you know, are, is, is it right to infringe upon people's rights as, as what is what is happening right now? Um, I, think the, I think the people are going to be very angry about this and are very angry. Um, yeah, it's just like if somebody should be, if somebody wants to stay in the house, that's, that's great. They should be allowed to stay in the house and they should not be compelled to leave. But to say that they cannot leave their house um, and they will be arrested if they do, this is this is a, this is a, this is, a, this is fascist. This is not democratic. This is not freedom. Give people back their goddamn freedom. Okay, let's go to the next question, please. Thank you. Our next question comes from Emmanuel Rosner with Deutsche Bank. Please go ahead. To a certain degree. Hi. Good evening. Um, Question on on Model Y. Um, I, I was hoping you can elaborate a little bit more on the drivers of uh, how the gross margin is already positive at such low volume. Um, how much of it is a function of the commonality with the Model Three? What other factors should we think about, and what does that mean for the outlook uh, for uh, the eventual gross margin on Model Y? Yeah. Sure. Um, a couple of thoughts there for why. Um, uh, the first is you know, it does carry a higher ASP. So on the revenue side, it carries a higher ASP than Model 3. And the deliveries that we started with were of the higher ASP versions of the cars. So we started with deliveries of performance um, uh, initially. And so that helps create some of the margin. Um, and that will come down with time as more variants are released and we have more of a steady state mix. But it, it's similar to the ASP trend that we had with Model 3 when we launched that product in Fremont two years ago. Uh, on the cost side, and I think you hit on a couple of the buckets, the commonality is huge. It's very important. And in addition to that, manufacturing processes are very similar to Model 3 as well. And so we have experience with that both with Model 3 in Fremont and then as well in Shanghai. And it helps to have an existing factory with existing workforce and knowledge here as well. So the ecosystem to support and launch the product is there. Um, th there remain a, a lot of opportunities to take, continue to take cost out of the car. I mean, the, the number of vehicles that we've built in the first quarter is, is quite limited relative to where we'll go. Yeah, it's good. We take cost out of the car and to make the product better. So it's, exactly. it's, it's not make the product worse. It's uh, any fool can take cost out of a car and make it worse. Um, we, we want to take cost out of the car, figure out how to make it lighter uh, and, and, and simpler. Um, and, and so it's, it's what the car just just incrementally improve as well as incrementally lowering cost. Um, 
but you know, for, for a five-seater Model Y, we, we, we expect um, you know marginal cost of that car to be comparable to the Model Three uh, once we have you know reached say PEP to ten or twenty thousand units or something like that, and and, and I've gone. Where you at? Hello? Elon, where you go? Dog. Ah, dog, where you go? Dog, where you at? Ah, this nigga ain't, man. He over there riding in the hill somewhere. He on the phone talking to niggas and shit. He talking about hunting you guys. I'm breaking up and shit, man. Hello? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> where the fuck niggas at? Bro, what are these niggas at? Man. Hmm. I guess the call over, y'all. Shit. Elon, he fucking in the hills and shit trying to buy some Ladies and state. gentlemen, please stand by. Your conference will resume momentarily. Thank you. This nigga in the hills and shit trying to get some fucking real estate by buying his goddamn factory, y'all. So don't trip. It's because he trying to buy the factory. He trying to get that motherfucking biggest shit. You heard him say they getting bigger. They getting big at like making factories and shit. That's what they do. They, they, they don't make cars and shit, nigga. They make factories. We got to get them them damn factories. Them factories, like, bro. Them factories is, was 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 uh doing it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, just based on what Elon said, you know, um, I believe that, you know, all they need really is just factories. And to keep it so 100 with you, like, if they can make the cars, yeah, hell yeah. Or if they can make, you know, Cause they do have a solar business, you know. They got a deal with PG&E, like that. That's dope as shit, you know. Um, they got some prospects that's intact that I like. You know, they're making, you know, with PG&E, they're making like a a, a battery pack. Fine, let me let me go to that article real quick while we wait, cause this shit all fucked up. I just want to read it. Uh, okay. Okay, so Tesla's massive one gigahertz mega pack battery project with PG&E is approved. Um, it says Tesla massive project to deploy. We was all kinds of Speakers, you're back online. Basically, they got to deal with PG&E. Right, sorry, we got disconnected so, for some reason. Yeah. Um, uh, what was the question again? Okay, uh, let's go to the next question, please. The next question comes from Ben Keller with Baird. Please go ahead. Hey, thank you very much. Um, it, it, just wondering about the the cell strategy. You know, in uh, in Reno, you have uh, obviously uh, integrated uh, there, but uh, you're buying cells. I, I think in Shanghai, and then, uh, what we think is in, in Germany, um, and so. How, how how are you looking at, at that going forward? And then could you just talk about Mr. Mizuno uh, and that Ford edition and kind of the, the process with, with adding him to the board? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, sure. From a sales perspective, you know, uh, I swear with God, Elon all the just partners talking off. we've had historically in, in the future, we're just looking for. Uh, it's crazy. Competitive technology and competitive pricing. Um, uh, I think we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, um, at Battery Investor Day, like how, how we're approaching all of it. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, we don't have like one model where we're restricting ourselves to, to, to pursue. We're just trying to find what's best for the products and 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 in the long run. Um, and then another question about the board. I so I couldn't. We yeah. couldn't hear the second part of the question. Yeah, I was asking about Mr. Mizuno uh, enter, entering the board. 
uh, and, and kind of the process behind that and what he brings to the board. Oh, I, th I think um, well, we all need a hero. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, but obviously, he brings a tremendous amount of uh, experience investing at the highest levels in the world um, and has done um, her work as uh, in, at the Japan uh, Pension Fund, which is the, the largest uh, fund of, of any kind in the world. Um, and uh, you know, generally, the conversations of the years, I've just shown incredible insight into um, uh, how, how the securities, the global security markets work, and what he thinks is you know, whether there are errors for reform. Um, uh, it just it seems like to have a, a strong philosophical underpinning about um, you know, how to make the future better. Um, and um, obviously shares that view regarding the environment, and um, just a very, a very sensible, smart person um, who brings a lot to the board, and um, I think uh, is generally recognized as such uh, by, by many people. I guess, I guess linking into the Panasonic relationship, uh, maybe just uh, uh, you know, how is that relationship going here, and is there any read through on bringing him on to the board? Thank you. Um, no, I think this is going to with the past cycle relationship. Um, I, I mean, I have a great relationship with the past cycle CEO. We, we meet regularly one on one and uh, talk all the time. And, you know, uh, so that, that relationship is, is strong. Um, uh, just, 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 you know, he, he would bring more of um, a broader, I think, global strategic uh, view to the board. Thank you. Let's go to the next question, please. Our next question will come from Jean Munster with Loop Ventures. Please go ahead. Congratulations on the progress. And you talked about full autonomy by the end of the year. I would love for you to walk through the rollout strategy of the Tesla network app and how that's going to look prior to the robo-taxi stage. Are you going to gradually take over human routes with autonomous capable routes over time, or how do you see that playing out? Well, it's pretty much going to play out as as it has play, played out, which is we'll um, re release more and more functionality. Um, you know, before we re release any functionality, it goes through extensive testing. Of course, we run it. We have a, a simulations team that uh, has a, I think a very good uh, simulation in the real world. Um, so we, we run any code changes through a battery test and simulation. Then we um, have a, a global QA team, which I'm on actually. I'm one of um, the on the global QA team, um, and and we test the, the releases in the real world, the real world find out the differences between the real world and the simulation, which is which are very, very, very many because the world is very complex and weird. Uh, and then we release it to a small group of uh, private beta testers within the company. Then to a larger beta audience, uh, including people outside the company, then to uh, early access uh, uh, Tesla owners, uh, and then finally a border release. Um, and so there's, there are many stages that these things go through. So if, if by the time something is being re going to wide release into the US, it, um, it has gone through all of those stages, and the software that's at the, at the very early stage. It's much more vast than what people are saying. So, um, it's just got to go through a, a, a very rigorous safety uh, process. Uh, so, it, you know, essentially, we, we need to um, figure out you can get very good at complex intersections, get very good at complex turns in intersections, um, and um, things like um, it could be. Uh, Malls in a parking lot, or um, office park, or uh, special events and sporting events, that kind of thing, and those eventually come back. Um, yeah, these, those, those are 
extra hard choices. Um, but it, it's still tracking very well. I feel like the autopilot engineering team is, um, is, is, is we just have an like, extremely talented group. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm deeply involved with the team. Um, you know, so we talk every week at, and, and meet every week when we can because now it's political meetings are focused. Um, so I have a quite a, a deep understanding of where we are, where we're headed, and um, I feel like we, we have a tremendous amount of momentum, and, and we'll have the functionality necessary right for um, full self driving by the end of the year. Um, now, after that functionality is released, there's, there's still another step, which is to uh, um, improve the reliability of it uh, once it's released. Um, so you can have full self driving with the human supervised that's supervised by the driver, and, and then if we keep improving reliability to the point where um, it's, the technology needs to be supervised by the driver, and we provide a, a vast body of data to regulators to show them that this was the case, uh, and then presumably the regulators, depending on one wish, would give approval for fully autonomous cars that can drive with no human on board. Um, Obviously, the regulatory approval process, that's difficult for us to um, predict uh, with accuracy because it's out of our hands. But um, the rest of the day, I feel very good about where we are. And so, to, to, to summarize, we want, we're going to get uh, owners full autonomy, some uh, level of that by the end of the year, and then a human yeah. in the loop, Tesla network app, sometime uh, in the first half of next year. Would that be the hope? Do uh, you mean like um, when can the car drive with no, no person? In, in uh, order, uh, with a person, initially a person to observe, would that be with the Tesla network app? Would that be really part of the year of 2021? Is that the hope? If it's described as a hope, I would say that's, that's probably a fair description. Okay. And then you know, kind of take it to its uh, end stage, the robo-taxi stage, any high-level thoughts, understand the regulatory is a massive unknown, but uh, if you're going to put a guess on it, where would we start, when would we start seeing robo-taxis? Well, I, I think, I think, I think it, it, it's quite likely in my view, um, again, if I could be wrong, I'm, you know, I, I'm, you know, as, as you think, Tesla, that we're, we're ahead in some areas and we're behind in others. Because when I give when I when I give when I give a guess, I give the guess that I think is the the the, the likely midpoint, not the the point with lots of margin. Um, if if this is normal distribution, I gave you the 50th percentile, uh, not the three sigma you know, optimistic or pessimistic. Um, so then that necessarily means at least half my predictions will be wrong and half will be right. That, and, and, yeah, I think, um, or it might be right, but offset by, you know, a few weeks to you know, a few months, in some cases, a few years. Um, but uh, I believe this, everything I've ever said would come true, did come true, it may come true late, but it, uh, it did come true. Um, so, um, yeah, punctuality is not my strong suit, um, but I always come through in the end. Uh, so, I, you know, I think we could see robot taxis in operation with network fleet next year. It, not in all markets, but in some. Thank you. And let's go to the last question, please. The last question will come from Pierre Ferru with New Street. Please go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my question. Um, one on gross margin first, uh, and uh, your uh, impressive performance in Q1. So there are three moving parts, uh, the tailwind from credits, of course, um, the Model Y ramping, even if it, if it broke even, it probably took uh, average gross margin down. And of course, you had like Fremont being closed, uh, shut down the last week of the quarter. It probably was the sort of an extra cost. And so when I looked at 
how gross margin evolves sequentially, excluding these three moving parts. I felt like the, your auto gross margin could have been up like a couple of points uh, sequentially. So I, I wanted to check with you uh, if that estimate uh, would make sense. And then I would have a follow up on energy storage. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so the thing, the three things that you mentioned, it's had a little bit of a hard time hearing the full question here because we're having a bit of network difficulty in the room, but I'll do my best here. So when we look at margin, we do exclude credits uh, as you have, so I agree with that. Uh, model Y ramping, bringing down overall gross margin, I agree with that as well. So it was lower than the overall average, uh, and that will increase with time. And um, uh, shutdown and efficiencies in both Shanghai and in Fremont also weighed on margin. Uh, and uh, the Shanghai margin was you know, below the average as well, even though it's increasing quickly and approaching Model 3, it still is below the average. And so I, I, I think that sentiment of your question was, if you were to remove those factors, was there a sequential increase? I think your intuition is right. Uh, we saw um, strength in growth margin across the board, as I mentioned, and in particular, F and X growth margins continue to improve, um, you know, despite slightly lower volumes there and higher fixed cost amortization. So there's good progress happening both on the ASB side and the cost reduction side for our products in production. And, and I think this also lends itself to you know, the power of the gross profit contribution to the company. Once we get through these ramp inefficiencies, we get Fremont up and running again. We increase capacity so we can spread out fixed costs uh, and continue to execute on cost reductions on our products. We feel very optimistic about that path going forward. Thanks. And I had a quick follow up on, on energy storage, if you can hear me well. Um, I think like I can't remember. The, the, I think from the very first uh, days I heard you on the call, you've always mentioned that demand for energy storage is always outstripping supply, and you have more orders than you can make. And so I'm kind of thinking there will be there should be an inflection point in that business at some point, and it's going to be driven by your ability to add much more manufacturing capacity, like battery manufacturing capacity. And at a high level, uh, how are you thinking about that inflection point uh, in terms of timeline? Um, in terms of timeline, I, I think what we've been doing with, with uh, both our partners and internally is looking at how to reduce the fundamentally the cost of, of investments in new cell capacity, um, because when you look at um, a car, a vehicle product, you know, there's a lot of things in the vehicle besides the cells. When you look at an energy storage project product, it's really just the cells. And so to really grow the energy storage business, it's all about cell investments. And so that, that's what we've been focused on. And, and, and I, I think, you know, not to give too much away, but we'll, that'll be one of the things we address in, in Battery and Investor Day is, is how we're, we're focused on that. Um, and and when, we, when we have that in the place we want, it'll be a lot easier to scale that business. Thank you very much uh, for all your great questions. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have today, uh, and we'll speak to you again in three months' time. Thank you very much, and have a good day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's conference call. Thanks for, you, for your participation. You may now disconnect. Hey, yo, no, so... All right, boom. So now look. I'm going to tell you what I got out of that, and and this is what it is. I believe that the prospects are intact with, with Tesla. They do have a lot of things to look forward to, but for the future, you can't really tell what's going to happen and what we're not going to call it what it is, but CV going on today. Man, Um, the most I can say is, uh, it's like Elon said, going to be bumpy and um. If you've been invested with Tesla before, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. And if you knew or if you just figuring out you want to invest, uh, shit, to be so real with you, Tesla is just one of those stocks that I keep hearing is just uh, not like any other stock ever on the market. So um, 
shit, man. Just understand that there are many other markets around. Uh, there's many videos out on YouTube. That's a platform this is being posted on. You can literally type it in, and uh, you can see the early stages. Uh, these cars, they they drive around on the streets. They uh, they're not all the way there, but you know, with time, I can imagine um, these cars are gonna. Who knows, man? He said uh, it won't be regulated. Um, you know, some markets it will be. Like I said, uh, some markets uh, they already have videos on YouTube of these cars performing, and it's it's insane, man. So. With technology just just being what it is today, like honestly, like um, you can't underestimate it. I'll say that for sure. Uh, the man makes rockets, so whatever scientists you need for that, whatever engineers you need for that, you gotta understand. You can't underestimate a guy like Elon, man. Cause like think about it. He even said that he said uh, about the uh, the the gas engines and the the two type of engines in the nineteen twenties. Um, you know, it was about a certain type of investor, like, uh, you know, this is new times, you know, it's 2020. That was kind of like his message, at least that's how I perceived it. Um, so, you know, don't, don't take this as like investment advice. I'm not a CPA, none of that. I'm just someone who is an investor. And I feel like everyone should understand like how this stock move. uh, the importance of what's going on with the company, their prospects are intact, but uh, their financials, they may be jumpy. And from the looks and with the shutdowns, um, the most I can say is like uh, any investor can tell you uh, it's going to be a, a headwind. And that's not a wild prediction. Just just look at the, the facts. They can't uh, operate their factories right now. Uh, you know, so I, that's, come on now. Like I, I don't know what to say other than uh, understand that free cash flow and you know, they got these lawsuits and uh, other things like that going on. You know, you just got to see your way through it. I understand that Tesla is a good stock. Um, I'm a long term investor. So after I see that three point three million call option, uh, I don't have that much money. Like I can barely afford one stock. But the whole idea is. Oh, shit. Let me turn that down. The whole idea is to just understand somebody really spent $3.3 million and if they never get up to a certain price, they lose that by a certain time. So like for me, it just gave me a little bit of motivation, honestly, because it's like, again, I don't have that much money. Like I can't go put that much money on freaking Tesla. That'd be dope. But shit, uh, all I want to say is that if you have, you know, what it takes to just see your way through it, let the stock kind of do what it does and just see the long-term prospects of it. I think you'd be in a good position. Like I said, they got to deal with pg and &E. That's top notch, man. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. We were actually talking about that. Uh, if you haven't um, known or if you didn't know about it, um, they have a, a deal, some sort of deal where they make a battery farm for pg and &E, And I think that's amazing just because I'm from an area, I'm actually in Oakland, like I'm from Oakland, California, like it's a place where pg and &E is everything. And it's just crazy because like, like to think that all these wildfires are going on and to think that Tesla wants to be a part of like just sustainable energy, you know, you got to think about that. Like, and I appreciate like the, the little prospects of like life. Like I, I, I appreciate Elon for his, is you know just him for being him man you know like he understands the circumstances and 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 i i do too you know it's an unfortunate thing we have this thing going on but i'm not in a position to say nothing all i'm gonna say is keep on holding stocks don't sell tesla is gonna run it up but it's probably not gonna look good for the rest of this year so if you're thinking about other things, go do other things. If you don't want to be a long-term investor, this ain't for you. Tesla is not the stock for someone who just want to get a quick gain. I'm telling you, this ain't what you do. This ain't what you do. It's going to go up in hundreds. It's going to go down in hundreds. And that's just what it is. So I'm going to go hop on this game. I'm going to go bust some niggas and shit. So this is my first time doing this shit again, y'all. So yeah, my mama, I'll see y'all niggas on the next one.